Okay, on this lesson, we're going to be looking at complex numbers. So a complex number, it contains a real part and an imaginary part. So this is the standard form for a complex number. So if you remember from Algebra 1, you talked about imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are whenever you are taking the square root of a negative number, which is impossible, right? Because when you take the square root, you're trying to find a number times itself that gives you that. Well, there's not a negative number times itself that gives you a negative answer. Okay, so that's an imaginary number. So you're going to have a real part, which is your A, and then the imaginary part, which will be your B. Okay, so <clears throat> there's different things that you can look at for your key concepts here. It says complex numbers are expressed in the form A plus BI, where A represents your real number and the BI represents the imaginary number. So, um, we're going to identify the real part and imaginary part of the complex number. So, I'm just going to label it as real, and then I'll abbreviate imaginary. So, the real part would be 7. The imaginary part would be negative 2i. Part B, the real part is 16, and then notice there is not a bi, so you would put 0i would be your imaginary part. Part C, so imaginary part would be 5i. Notice there is not a real part, so we would just put 0 because that's just your regular number. And then D, the real part is 6. Imaginary part would be negative 1i. So that's a complex number. It has a real part, imaginary part. Imaginary numbers will include that i part. So if you don't remember from Algebra 1, imaginary unit, anytime I have the square root of a negative number or square root of negative 1, it equals i. So in place of the negative, you're going to bring it on the outside and put an i. Something that's very important that you need to know is i squared will always equal a negative 1. Because remember, we've already discussed, if we take the square root and we multiply it by itself, it gets rid of that radical. So that just gives us a negative 1 there. So we're going to be simplifying these. What I would do is I would start out with breaking it down with an i squared because we know that equals a negative 1. So to get i cubed, I would have to do i times i squared, right? I add the exponents. I already know i squared equals a negative 1. I know i is just my i here. So i times a negative 1 would be a negative i. So you're just simplifying it. Okay, so break this down. i squared times i squared times i squared would give us i, I to the 6th. Because remember, when we multiply, we add the exponents. We know i squared is negative 1 negative 1, negative 1, we multiply, we get 1 times negative 1, which gives us a negative 1 for the answer. Okay, so an i to the fifth, we would have an i squared times an i squared times an i, because we add those exponents. So we would have negative 1 times negative 1 times i, which would give us a positive i. Because a negative 1 times a negative 1 is positive 1 times i is just i. Okay, so this one gets a little tricky. We have a 20. So I'm going to start out with i to the or i squared. Now I'm not going to write that all those times, 10 different times. So I'm just going to raise it to the 10th power because remember when we have that, we multiply those and it gives us i to the 20th. So I know i squared is negative 1. I'm going to raise it to the 10th. So you're doing a negative 1 times a negative 1 10 times, which gives us a positive. So anytime you're um, raising something to an even power, you always get a positive answer. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the back. So here we're going to be simplifying square roots of negative numbers. So remember the square root of negative 1 is just i. So what you will do is if there's a negative under the square root, we're going to bring it on the outside and make it an i. Now the reason that's a uh, put a negative is because I brought that down. And then I'm going to take the square root of positive 64. So we bring out the negative so that way we can simplify the actual radical. So square root of 64 is a perfect square. Square root of 64 equals 8. So I would have a negative 8 
i for my answer. Here's the negative, here's the i, and I simplified the square root of 64. Okay, so next one, notice I have a negative. I'm going to bring it on the outside. Remember, we discussed on the last lesson, we can break this fraction into the square root of the numerator, denominator. And then we're going to simplify each piece. So square root of 9 would be 3. So I'll just put the i on top with it. And then square root of 18 is not perfect. We need to use factor tree, 2 times 9 3 times 3. Remember, this is a square root, so we pair them. So that would be 3 square root of 2. Now, remember we discussed that we can't have a radical in the denominator, and notice we do, so we have to rationalize it. So this 3, notice right here, I can actually cancel with that. 3 divided by 3 is just a 1. So to get rid of this radical, I need to multiply by the square root of 2 on top and bottom. So that would be i square root of 2 on top over just 2. Because remember, a radical or square root times itself gets rid of the radical. So there's my final answer. Okay, so looking at part C, first bring out the negative, make it an i. So you can simplify the square root of positive 98. So I'm going to use factor tree. I know 98 is not perfect. Always check that at the beginning if you need to. <clears throat> so 2 times 49, 7 times 7. We're pairing these because it's a square root and then boxing in the 2. Remember, your pair comes out because we're trying to take out all of the perfect square numbers. So I have 7i square root of 2. Don't forget about your i that you took out. All right, D. Notice I have a negative sign already on the outside. I'm going to bring this out and make it an I. And then I'm going to take the square root of the numerator and denominator. So neither of those are perfect, so I need to use factor tree. I'll come on the side. So I pair it. It's a square root. So my numerator is going to be 5 squared of 5, but I have this negative i with it. And then I have square root of 3. It's already prime number, so I know I can't simplify it. Okay, so I have to get rid of the, denom or the radical in the denominator, so I have to multiply it by square root of 3 on top and bottom. So when I multiply the tops, you can only multiply these inside pieces. So I'm just rewriting negative 5i. That would be square root of 15. And then multiplying these together, I just get a 3. Always look to see if you can simplify these outside pieces, and we can't. 15, I can't simplify it, so that would be my final answer. So you're simplifying the radical just like we've done before, except we're having to bring that negative that's under the square root. Um, bring it out as an I on the outside so we can simplify. <clears throat> Alright, so the next part, we have complex conjugates. Remember we talked about conjugates the other day when we were doing radicals. Um, if I have A plus BI <clears throat> is a root of a polynomial, then its conjugate is A minus BI. So just like the other day, the only difference is the sign. So that way when you multiply them, the middles cancel. So we're going to solve each equation using square roots. So I need to, on square root method, I need to isolate the term that is squared. So notice z is squared here. It's already isolated. So to get rid of a squared, I'm just going to rewrite it. I need to take the square root of both sides. So I get z, and then I'm going to have two answers, a positive and negative. So anytime I'm solving a quadratic, which is a squared, I have two answers. So when I simplify this, I'm going to bring the negative on the outside as an i, and then I'm going to simplify the positive square root, or square root of positive 49, which is 7. So the 7 goes in front of your i. So z would be positive and negative 7i.
Okay, so looking at B, I need to isolate my term that is squared. Negative 2 is not squared, so I need to divide by negative 2 at the beginning. Then I can take the square root to get rid of the squared, because when I take the square root of something that's squared, it gets rid of it, so I just have W. Remember, you get two answers. I'm going to bring out the negative sign and put an I. And then I have to simplify the square root of positive 24. It's not perfect, so I need to use factor tree. It's a square root, so I need to pair up the same numbers and then box in whatever is left. Okay, so I'm bringing out a 2 because that's what I have a pair of. So 2 and then put the I. Square root of, if there's multiple ones left, I multiply them, it gives me a 6. So there's my answer. So we are um, solving these using the square root method. So we're isolating the term that's squared. And then once we take the square root, um, some of these have negatives under it. So we have to use an I, and then we can simplify the, the radical that's positive. If you have any questions, let me know.